Hello and welcome. Today we are uh, here to discuss the poem The Listeners by Walter de la Mare. It's a very interesting poem uh, and it is part of the alternative English of HS first year, uh, the course that is included under the Assam State Higher Secondary Board. So it's a very interesting poem. It deals with the uh, supernatural elements and uh, you will find that the poem is filled with elements and ingredients that create an atmosphere of fear and suspense. Now this is Walter Delamare for you. He's an English writer and his works are famous for the psychological kind of writings. The Listeners is one of his uh, very well-known poem. Uh, and it is included in your course. So come, let's start reading the poem. And uh, first I'll read the poem line by line. And later uh, I will come back to explain to you the nuances of the poem. I'll explain to you the difficult words in the poem. And I'll also guide you to uncover the various layers that have been packed in the poem that make the poem very interesting. So let us start. The Listeners by Walter de la Marais. You can open your textbooks and uh, follow as we read the poem. Alternatively, you can also look at the screen uh, where the poem, I have put up the poem here on the screen. So you can look at the screen also and follow the poem as we read the poem. The Listeners by Walter de la Marais. Is there anybody there? Said the traveller, knocking on the moonlit door and his horse in the silence chomped the grasses of the forest's ferny floor. And a bird flew out of the turret above the traveller's head, and he smote on the door a second time. Is there anybody there? he said. But no one descended to the traveller. No head from the leaf-fringed sill leaned over and looked into his grey eyes, where he stood perplexed and still. But only a host of phantom listeners that dwelt in the lone house then stood listening in the quiet of the moonlit, moonlight to that voice from the world of men, stood thronging the faint moonbeams on the dark stair that goes down to the empty hall, hearkening in an air stirred and shaken by the lonely traveller's call. And he felt in his heart their strangeness, their stillness answering his cry. While his horse moved, cropping the dark turf, Neath the starred and leafy sky, for he suddenly smote on the door even louder and lifted his head. Tell them I came, and no one answered, that I kept my word, he said. Never the least stirred the listeners, made the listeners, though every word he spake, fell echoing through the shadowiness of the still house from the one man left awake. Aye, they heard his foot upon the stirrup, and the sound of iron and stone, and how the silence surged softly backwards when the plunging hoofs were gone. Now, this is the poem as you just read it on the surface. So, while reading the poem, have you been able to discover some things that make it full of suspense? If not, don't worry, we will now look at those elements. First, the name of the poem is The Listeners. And the story, sorry, the poem starts with the with somebody asking a question. So the question is, is there anybody there? And who asks this question? The question is asked by the traveller. A traveller has come and he knocks on a moonlit door. This is your second indicator, which shows that the time is night. It is night time now and a traveller has come knocking on uh, the door and he uh, and his horse in the silence stomped the grasses of the forest's ferny floor. He has come riding on a horse and has come to a house at night and uh, he knocks on the door. And as he knocks on the door, you can hear his horse or the horse is chomping the grass. What is chomping the grass? It is making a noise while biting. So the horse is chomping the grass and the traveller is knocking on the door of a house. And where is the house? Of the forest's ferny floor. 
The horse is chomping grass on the ferny floor of a forest. That is, the house is in the middle of a forest. Have you ever seen a house in the middle of a forest? A house, a human habitation is usually at a place where there is human settlement. You can find a house in a village, in a town, in a city. But a house in the middle of a forest is not something normal. So from there you get the hint that something is wrong here. Something is out of the normal here. Something is not normal. Here we, the, a person has come knocking on the door at night of a house. The house is situated in a forest. And a bird flew out of the turret. A turret is basically a tower. You have seen maybe in pictures old houses which have got towers on uh, towers and then there are you know smaller towers over a larger tower actually those smaller towers over a larger tower is known as a turret a pointed structure it may be so it's called a turret so out of the turret a bird flies out bird now imagine it's a it's night time in the middle of the forest there is a house and out of the turret a bird flies out above the traveler's head and he smote upon the door a second time. But when he first asked the question, is there anybody there? Nobody answered his call. So a little impatient, he now smotes on the door. That is, he, he smote on the door. Smote is the past tense of the word smite. And the word smite means to strike at something with force. So you see, when, the, when his first knock does not elicit any response, he gets a little impatient and he hits the door a little hard and again he repeats his question, is there anybody there? This time you can expect that he raised his voice and he knocks on the door. But no one descended to the traveller. No head from the leaf fringe sill leaned over and looked into his grey eyes. Now this is another very interesting indicator, grey. In literature, colours are symbolic. So the colour grey is rather very symbolic here. Grey is associated with uh, lifelessness. So the traveler's eyes have been dis uh, described as grey. Now this is very interesting. Uh, which person does have grey eyes? Usually grey eyes are associated with dead bodies. And here whose eyes are described as grey? The traveler's eyes are descri described as grey. Now, why is that done? Imagine somebody has come to your house knocking on the door at night and his eyes are all grey. Now, where he stood perplexed and still, he knocks on the door and nobody answered. So, he is very confused and he just stands there. But only a host of phantom listeners. Now, who are the ones who are listening? Remember the name of the poem is The Listeners. And the listeners means those people inside the house who are listening to, who can hear the traveler knock on the door and ask, is there anybody there? These people don't answer. So who are these people inside the house? Well, the poet says that they are a host of phantom listeners. Now, phantom listeners, that is, uh, these are creatures which do not have any corporeal uh, existence that is they are not physical creatures that in other words they are spirits or ghosts phantom listeners that dwelt in the lone house den then and now you see the house has been described there it's a lone house you can't find any other house nearby it's a lone that is lonely house stood listening in the quiet of the moonlight to that voice from the world of men so the poet says these phantom listeners inside the house they are huddled together inside the house and they're just listening. The traveler is knocking on the door and they're just listening. They don't answer the traveler. They just sit inside the house and just listen. And they peculiar to imagine. Stood thronging the faint moonbeams on the dark stair that goes down to the empty hall. So here the scene takes us, the poet describes, in describing the poet takes us inside the house. From outside the house, the poet takes us inside the house. And inside the house, the moonlight that is entering through the crevices, through the gaps in the 
uh, doors and windows to moonlights they are described as shaking in the inside the empty in on the, the staircase and the staircase is dark and the hall is empty and there you can see the moonlight is moonlight is shaking maybe it is because of uh, you know the uh, trees and the branches that are moving outside and the shadow that is uh, cast when the trees come in line with the light and then the other breeze that takes the branch away and the shadow is removed this creates a dancing uh, appearance of the moonlight you may have seen at night so what is what you have to note here is that the hall has been described as empty the house has been described as a lone house that is a, one single house the traveler outside is alone uh, so there is a you can understand that an air of loneliness solitary a solitary feeling and loneliness has been described here uh, hearkening in an air stirred and shaken by the lonely traveler's call hearkening means listening so and he felt in his heart and he felt in his heart their strangeness that is the traveler the traveler in his heart felt their strangeness there means the listeners the people inside you know, whatever is inside their strangeness they're very strange he's calling them he's screaming he's banging on the door and still they don't answer him so it is very strange of them and his heart he felt the strangeness the stillness answering his cry and he look at him he is crying that is he's shouting he's raising his voice and he's calling them time and again but this they are responding to his calls with silence they don't respond to him so it's very strange is it not now while his horse moved cropping the dark turf neath the starred and leafy sky for he suddenly smote on the door even louder and lifted his head now you see he had called them twice and they did not respond so on third time he got very angry or you can imagine you can sense it this is got, got a little angry he has lost his cool a bit and this time he just he does not just ask us ask them is there anybody there he now extends his question he now tells them he now delivers um, a message to them he says tell them i came and no one answered that i kept my word now this is very interesting now he he now declares he now tell you know speaks a sentence he says tell them who is them we don't know he says tell them i came and no one answered that i kept my word oh this is very interesting this traveler it seems has come to keep his promise now interesting is it not a person has come to the middle of a forest uh, he has come to keep a promise now what can this be why should a man come to a house located in the middle of a forest and what a timing that he has chosen to come it is night night time he's come there at night to deliver to keep his promise whom did he promise what sort of a promise was this that he should go to a house in the middle of a forest we don't know what is the nature of the promise we don't know to whom the promise has been made we don't know what kind of a promise it was and we all know that part part of fulfilling the promise means that the traveler has to go at night to a house located in the middle of a forest now if he has gone to keep a promise why did the occupants of the house not respond to him we don't know that never the least stir made the listeners now even after saying that even when the poet says that tell them i came and no one answered even after he says that nobody even makes a little movement no sound at all though every word is spake fell echoing to the shadowiness of the still house from the one man left awake they're saying only one man is left awake and now all the rest uh, we don't know about them i they heard his foot upon the stair up just now he says that the one man left awake uh, so you begin to think maybe he's the only one awake and maybe they are sleeping but 
now the poet again takes us inside the house and he says, these people inside the house, they hear him as he mounts his horse. A stirrup, you see the meaning has been given here on the side. It's a loop hanging from the sides of a horse. And you have seen it in the movies, perhaps. It's like a step in which the rider puts his shoe inside and mounts his horse. So his uh, shoe, when he, when the sole of his shoe hits the stirrup, they hear the sound and how the silence surged softly backward when the plunging hoofs were gone. So he, you know, mounted the horse and then as he, he just galloped away, his horse just galloped away. That is the end of the poem. Now let us look at the poem a little more in detail. We have gone into the detail, a little more detail. First of all, see the rhyme scheme of the poem is A, B, C, B. That is the first line, the second line, the third line, they don't rhyme. But the second line and the fourth line, they rhyme. So here you see I've written A, B, C, B here so that you can understand. So the second line and the fourth line, they rhyme. But the first line and the second line or the third line, they don't rhyme. So this irregular rhyme scheme has been very well used in this poem because you see the poem is about loneliness there are some certain elements in this poem uh, you will see I, i've told you there are certain words in the poem and this poem is basically about uh, basically there is a feeling of loneliness here but this loneliness has been this loneliness has been used to actually uh, bring about when it is lonely you are afraid more so this loneliness basically has been used to create the feeling of fear. So if you would make a rhyme scheme that was rhyming even more, then what would happen? This loneliness would also become, actually, this loneliness would also become melancholy. Melancholy means sad. And this is what the poet did not want to do. What he wants is that he wants to create the feeling of fear. That is why this irregular rhyme scheme in which the first, second and third lines, they don't rhyme. But the second line and the fourth line, they rhyme. Plus the rhyme scheme that has been used here, it is not part of your syllabus. So I will not go into that detail. Uh, sorry, not the rhyme scheme, but the, the meter and the, uh, uh, the meter that has been used in the poem. Uh, those things actually have been used in such a way that the although the poem describes uh, the feeling of loneliness it does not become melancholy but that element of fear and the element of suspense and element of the unknown is uh, continued is maintained in the poem so that is why this irregular rhyme scheme and the kind of meter that he has used in the poem only adds to that now we have to observe a few things here you see, I told you in the beginning that this poem is a poem that is about suspense and all that. Now, how does a poet create this atmosphere of suspense? The, you see, the poet creates this atmosphere of suspense by uh, a very interesting technique. He uses suggestions, very intelligent suggestions. Uh, this suggestions that is, he does not tell you, never in this poem has he told you that there are ghosts here. He doesn't tell you that. There are suggestions and if you look at those suggestions like he says a traveler a lonely traveler this word lonely has been used many times silence lonely night and then you see a bird suddenly flying out of the turret then the eyes of the traveler have been described as gray what kind of a man has gray eyes so you know, the grey eyes, as I already told you, are associated with dead bodies. Now, this guy, this particular man, the traveller, has got grey eyes. If you also go into a very detailed analysis of the poem, into the depth of the poem a little more, or if you do a further reading on this poem, you will realise that uh, this house is very symbolic here. Now, this house is actually... Um, uh, you may say a border that separates two worlds. One is the world of the living and one is the world of the dead. And you cannot say instantly which side of the world is the world of the living and which side of the world is the world of the dead. You can't say that. 
See, if you say that the world outside the house is the world of the living, then why did the traveler have grey eyes? And if you say that the world inside, you know, the house is the world of, uh, you know, the dead, then why did this man, the traveler, come to keep a promise and try to interact with these people inside the house when he knows that the people inside the house are dead? So these are very interesting questions. If you think about them and read the poem carefully, you will realize that the poem is full of horror and suspense. Uh, so let us go into analyzing some questions that you need to understand. And if you understand these points, basically after reading the poem, there are some points that you have to understand. First, like, uh, is there anybody there? Who is the speaker of these lines? You see, the speaker is the lonely traveler. Uh, the speaker of this poem is the is the lonely uh, traveler who has come there. Uh, he is speaking, and whom is he speaking to? He is speaking to the occupants of the house. Where is the house located? You know now that the house is located in the middle of a forest. What is the time when the traveler has come to the house? By now you know that the traveler has come to the house in the dead of the night. Now, who live in the house? The details of the occupants, now we don't know clearly who lives in the house. But the poet says that a host of phantom dwellers reside in the house. So now what is the purpose? Why has the traveler come to visit the house? The traveler has come to visit the house, we don't know clearly why. The poem tells us that the traveler has come to the house because he had evidently promised somebody that he would come there and to keep his promise he has come to the house. But what kind of a promise it is? We don't know. Whom has it made such a promise? We don't know. So these are the key points of this poem that you need to understand. One thing that you can do at home is that you can also try and read the poem and find out the elements of fear and suspense uh, in the poem. If you can try and read the poem again, you can go through this explanation again and by yourselves you can do this thing. Uh, you can perhaps, you know, find out the elements that create a feeling of fear and suspense in the poem. I'll give you some hints here. You see, uh, fear is not uh, created here by any direct... Uh, by any direct... Um, mentions. Now this is a very important point here, you see. Uh, you will see that those movies in which there is a direct mention or a direct portrayal, suddenly somebody dressed as a ghost comes in front of you. Okay, that is fearful uh, in a movie, but you have seen how, why do we call our suspense movies? Why do we like our suspense movies? We like our suspense movies because we don't know exactly. We know that something is going to happen. But exactly how or exactly what is going to happen, we don't know. So in this poem also, there are suggestions that things are not normal. So the poet makes very subtle suggestions in the poem that make this poem full of fear and suspense. Now what you can write this, if you write this answer, try to attempt this answer yourself, you can write you can write this that the elements of fear and suspense in this poem is not created by any direct mention of any ghost or supernatural elements but then then how does the how does the poet create fear the poet creates fear by some subtle suggestions subtle means very nuanced very intelligent suggestions now what are these suggestions for example the element of loneliness. We are afraid when we are alone. Time and again in this poem, words associated with loneliness has been used. Like you see uh, this word called the, this word that has been used, the lone house alone. Empty. Stillness. Uh, then you will find the horse in the silence. Apart from the poet, nobody is, sorry, apart from the traveler, nobody is making any movement, nobody is making any noise. So the traveler is all alone, knocking at a door in the night in the middle of a forest. So these kind of intelligent suggestions, they create fear and suspense in the poem. 
there are also suggestions of supernatural in the poem uh, this i leave it to you to find out what are what are the uh, say i'll make it simple for you what are the hints of supernatural pre presence uh, what are the hints of supernatural presence in the poem you can find out those things uh, about what are the things that hint at supernatural presence like you see a bird flying out of the turret uh, it could be the owl and you know the owl is a symbol of what you know it try to write this answer if you write this answer really if you take up things in your own hand and try it then you will see you'll understand the poem better and if you still do not understand i'm always there you can always get in touch uh, to clear your doubts you can always get in touch and i would be very happy if any one of you write these things and try to show me you can leave your comments in the comment box you can look at the description box in which i have mentioned my email id you can also reach me via the email uh, if you have written any answer or if you have got any doubts and i shall be more than happy to solve those doubts for you i hope you have understood this poem so this is the poem for you today thank you very much